for the next stage, let's see, we've performed step one and step two here. Step three is to discharge each individual cell to 2.5 volts. Now to do that, the CellPro Power Lab 8 requires an external battery to power itself and also to regeneratively discharge the electricity. So we're gonna use the Yeti 400 battery. It's an AGM 400 watt hour battery. We're gonna use that to power the Cell Lab 8 and also to provide that regenerative storage device that we put power into from our LifePo4 cells. Uh, so to do that, I need the Yeti Yeti 400 battery to be a little bit discharged, like maybe 50% discharged. And uh, I don't know how much power I'm actually gonna be pulling out of the LifePo4 cells. I figure I'll just drain it for about an hour with my two light bulbs. Then we'll try filling it up with the CellPro Power Lab 8. We'll see how full that gets this battery. Got it hooked up to the Anderson port on the side here. Currently it's at 12.94 volts and we're just gonna turn on our inverter and two light bulbs for about 160 watt draw. There we go, 163 watt draw. And I'm gonna set a timer on my phone so that I disconnect that after about an hour. For the next part, we will disassemble our LifePo4 battery so that we have access to the individual cells instead of having them in series. All right, so for this step, probably the most important thing to remember is be very, very careful not to drop your tool across these contacts. You'll short out the battery and then you'll probably have a fire on your hands or, you know, at the very least, a damaged battery. Nobody wants that. These little tiny screws on top are T20s. When I bought this battery on Amazon, it came with all the screws that you see here installed and it also came with this stuff and even the couple of these mounting crimp plates that I'm going to use for 4 slash 0 4 out wire. So this is a T20 and we're just going to remove all of these screws so that we have access to the individual cells. All right, so it's worth pointing out at this point on the multimeter here what the voltages are of all of these different cells. So again, we're bottom balancing. So the purpose of this bottom balancing operation is going to be to have the same voltage on each individual cell. So it's gonna be like 2.5 volts on each individual cell, I believe, as a starting place. And then we're gonna bring the whole pack up in series to whatever, you know, whatever charge we want, whatever voltage we want. And then we'll know that we have exactly the same capacity in each individual cell, right? So uh, if we take a look at this cell right here, 3.074 volts. This one, 3.070 volts. This one, 3.1 volts. This one, 3.057 volts. This is the factory charge, and I've just brought the whole pack down as a, as a unit to 12 volts. You can see that on the factory charge, these are not balanced. So the, the voltages are not the same on each individual cell when you bring the pack as a whole down to 12 volts. So that's what we're gonna fix. You could probably try to do this manually with like a light bulb or something on each individual cell, but it would be tedious and you'd have to be extremely careful. So that's why we're gonna use the CellPro Power Lab 8 because it's an automated solution. And once you get down to really low voltages, you have to be very careful because the voltage fall off is, is like, it's like a cliff face once you get down to the lower voltages. So um, I think it'll fall very quickly from three volts down to 2.5 volts. It might catch you by surprise. Whereas it's not going to catch a computer by surprise if, if a computer is constantly polling and monitoring the voltage. So that's why we're going to use the cell probe. I don't want to screw up my cells and computers are better at tedious crap than I am. All right, so my timer went off for about an hour. I think I stopped it maybe six minutes early. The power meter reads 12.46 volts and the meter on the Yeti reads... Uh, a little bit below 50%, which I don't know. Usually when I use the Anderson ports on the side, they don't run through the shunt uh, on the inside. So that's kind of like a, like a ballpark estimate on the power meter on the front. So I, I think it's probably right at about 50%. It might be a little low, it might be a little high, I don't know. At this point, we're ready to hook up the CellPro Power Lab 8 and drain one of these cells down to 2.5 volts. So at this point, I've got the Cell Pro hooked up. Uh, this is not attached to anything. It was using these things on the ends. So I cut those off and I replaced them with 45 amp Anderson power pole connectors because I like those. They're a lot better in my opinion. And that allows me to run my power meter right here. 
So my battery is at 12.45 volts. My banana plug connectors here on the power lab are hooked up to one cell, just one cell here. Uh, and this is a 40 amp fused connection. I've added these, uh, I think I snipped off the ends of these or maybe they came bare wire and I used a hydraulic crimper to crimp on these 10 to 12 gauge ring terminals from AutoZone. These were pretty easy to pick up. Uh, this is the first time that I've ever used the CellPro PowerLab 8, so we'll see if we can figure out how to do this. EV4U Custom Conversions has a video on how to operate the CellPro PowerLab 8 for a regenerative discharge here um, when, when bottom balancing these cells, and it's, it's a pretty good video. That's actually what I use to do this. I'm going to do an abbreviated version that's hopefully a little, little faster. Um, his is a little, little bit long-winded, but it's all good information, so I recommend you check that out. I'll have a link down below uh, in the description. Uh, so what we're going to do is increase and decrease here. Choose task, enter, set amps, yes. Charge rate, uh, cell level discharge. Oh, this is the charge voltage. Uh, so we're not going to charge, so I guess this doesn't really matter. Um, enter, three beeps at fuel level 90%. Sure, whatever. Cold set point, uh, 50. 41, I don't know, he had his on 41, I'll do that. Okay, discharge rate, this is the one that we care about. So we're gonna go up, nope, we're gonna go down. No, we are gonna go up, we need to go to 30 amps. Okay, hit enter. Cell level discharge voltage, okay, this is the one that we care about. We're gonna go down to 2.5 volts. And it loops back around to four volts if we go too far, so that's good. Uh, cycles, no cycling. And cycling with charge or discharge. I'm gonna go with discharge, but no cycling, so it doesn't matter. Okay, second step is to do back and enter together, and this will start the uh, discharge. So uh, the EV4U customs guy uses the LiPo generic high power profile, so we'll use that. Parallel packs, that's a um, RC thing, uh, no. Charge rate, don't care. Discharge rate, 30 amps, yes. Start charge, we're gonna do decrement or descending, decrement I guess. Uh, discharge only, charge only, discharge only. So um, it apparently, won't discharge this into my battery as a regen discharge because my battery is AGM, uh, which is interesting. Actually, I see that regen discharge is off by default, so let's see if we can enable it. So we'll go to charge options, whatever. Battery, battery current limit, battery low cutoff, use regen discharge, yes. Cool. Okay, so now maybe we can we can try that again and use the regen feature. Okay, uh, lipo high power generic, thirty amp discharge rate, regen discharge. Use banana jacks. Those are these. Checking pack, lipo, regen discharge. So we should hear the fans start up here in a minute. And I should also see wattage going into my battery through my power meter back here. Yeah, we got 47 watts going into the battery now, 44 watts. And the EV4U custom guy said that uh, these wires will start to get hot. I'm noticing a little bit of heat down here at the banana jacks now. All right, anyway, so we're gonna let it do its thing. And uh, the instruction sheet that I made up calls for us to repeat this procedure for each individual cell in the pack to bring it down to 2.5 volts. Uh, we are to let each cell rest overnight and then repeat and drain it to 2.5 volts again. So I will, uh, I'm not gonna run the camera the whole time. I'll just jump cut and we'll, we'll show the process repeating for each cell and go through the whole thing. Even though we're bringing it down to 2.5 volts here uh, per cell, we're actually going to be stopping this procedure when the resting voltage of the cell is 2.75 volts. So 
when we let it rest overnight, uh, it'll, the, the voltage on the cell will rise. And when that resting voltage is 2.75 volts, then, we're no, then we know that we're done and our pack is bottom balanced properly. Oh, one more thing. I think if we're curious what the voltage is on the cell, I don't think we have to use a multimeter. I think we can press these increase and decrease buttons. There we go. We can see the voltage of the cell as it, as it falls right there. Pretty cool. So I'm noticing already that uh, my output has dropped to like 32 watts from the cell through the cell pro into the AGM battery. When I look at the voltage here, you know, it's falling steadily. 2.66, 2.64, you know, we're probably seeing the, what, a reverse stadium effect or something, since there's less power in here, it's pulling less power out. Maybe it's slowing down as it gets close to the goal so that it doesn't overshoot. Anyway, I'm just gonna let it work and do, it, do its thing. There we go. So it gives you the elapsed time, eight minutes and seven seconds, and it's done. So now, I believe we move on to the next cell here. Being very careful not to drop my tool across the terminals. All right, do this again. Discharge stopped. Generic high power, no parallel packs. 30 amp discharge rate, regen, use banana jacks, lipo, there it goes. Starting at 3.08 volts on this one, 09, and I'll let that run. All right, that's my second cell done. This one took nine minutes and 43 seconds. Let's queue up the third cell. Yeah, those wires are getting hot. They're not incredibly hot though, not a huge deal. And the funny thing is, they're actually hotter down here towards the banana plugs than they are up here at the top. EV4U guy was saying that it was the opposite. I think maybe he has some bad connections near his battery ring terminals or whatever he's using. All right, third cell. This one starts out at 3.11 volts, 3.06. All right, see you in nine minutes. All right, 8.51 for the third cell. Let's move on to the fourth. See you in nine minutes. All right, and we're pretty much done for the day. Uh, nine minutes and 12 seconds on that last cell. And what we'll do is we'll let this rest overnight and then we'll repeat the process again in the morning and we'll do the same thing again the following day. We do this three times. See you tomorrow. All right, it is the morning of the following day and I just tested these with my multimeter, multimeter for those of you who wanna say it that way. This one appears to be a little high which is interesting. It, it seems to be the only one that's kind of like out of, out of line with the rest of them. It doesn't really matter because we're just going to do this all over again. But putting this thing down, let's see, 2.77, 2.79, 2.77, 2 2.76. So this one's a little low, this one's a little high, these two are kind of in sync. Let's uh, do our procedure all over again. This doesn't put a whole lot of energy back into the goal zero. I think I probably could have stood to uh, only remove a half hour worth of energy, maybe uh, uh, 100 watt hours instead of 200 watt hours. I don't really like keeping my AGM battery at less than 50%, so it'll be all right though. We'll charge it back up after, after we're finished with the discharge cycle. Let's see how long this is gonna take. Is it 2.6? 
two. Yeah, this is gonna be fast today. Just a couple of minutes each. Pack removed after complete. Hmm, that's interesting. It says 2.6 volts. Okay, let's move on to the other ones. Our goal is to get the resting voltage to 2.75 volts. So, as long as we do that, I think we're fine. This is the one that was a little high, 2.82 volts. That one worked. Not sure why the other one failed. That's interesting. Wonder if I've got a bad cell. Plans of pack remove too. And these were the two that were the closest to uh, balance. So maybe they're just done at this point. Interesting. This could all be automated pretty easily. I don't really understand why manufacturers choose to top balance instead of bottom balance. This could be done fairly, fairly quickly at a factory. Pack removed on that one too. Okay. Well, I guess that's it. We'll uh, do this again tomorrow. Okay, third day. See what we got. Two point six six, two point six nine, two point six eight, two point six seven. Hmm. It says stop when the resting voltage is 2.75, so I don't know. I feel like I should probably stop at this point. Yeah, I guess I will stop.